Our physical screen for today is the 90-90 shoulder rotation test. Standing vertically, take your right arm up to a position where the elbow is the same height as the shoulder. Then externally rotate your arm so that your forearm also gets to a vertical position. If you have to use your body or come out of your natural posture, or if your arm falls short of perpendicular to the ground, the test is not complete. Now where this presents problems in the golf swing is if your right arm cannot externally rotate, you can't set the club onto the proper plane. You'll have what we call a chicken wing or a flying right elbow. In order to set the club properly, you have to be able to externally rotate your shoulders. Now we're going to do the same test from a five iron posture. So now in your golf stance, again, raise your elbow to the same height as your shoulder and then try to rotate your arm to a position where the forearm is the same angle as your spine angle. Try not to come out of your posture or use your body to achieve that angle. If you can set your right forearm at the same angle as your spine, you've passed the test. Repeat on the left side as well. Let's begin our warm-ups with banded one-legged step-outs. Assume a five iron position, rotate into your backswing, and then step over a line maintaining tension on the band at all times. Let's do two sets of 10 on each leg. Our next warm-up exercise is banded hip adductions. Now with the resistance band just above your knees, assume a five iron posture, arms across your chest, rotate into your backswing, and now try to press your knees away from each other, keeping your feet flat on the ground. Let's do two sets of 10 adductions with each leg. Now let's jump into our workout. We're going to begin with stack slams. With a golf club in your hand, left hand grip over the club, right hand under the club. Slowly reach and extend into a backswing and then forcefully slam the club as hard as you can right back to the original starting position. Do two sets of 10 in each direction. Next we're going to do resistance band pull throughs with the resistance band attached to a higher anchor point. So let the band stretch you into a backswing position and then pull as hard as you can right back to the original starting position. Pause for a few moments and repeat. Do two sets of 10 in each direction. If you have a tendency to laterally slide in your swing, banded hip slide resistance is going to be a great exercise for you. Assume a five iron position, arms across your chest, step out so the resistance band is trying to pull you in a certain direction. If you don't have the strength or stability to support that rotation, the band is going to pull you in a direction. Make sure you stay stable, do two sets of 10 in each direction. Now let's take it over to the mat and do lower body loading. These are basically just dry backswing exercises where you're going to pay attention to whether you have any sort of lateral slide in your swing which is going to rob you of speed and distance. Try to move your right hip straight back from your target line in order to initiate the backswing do two sets of 10 swings. Now we're going to hit some golf balls with the slam and stick. With a short iron in hand, take three quarters backswing. On the downswing, try to slam the club into the turf or the mat as hard as you can, and then hold your follow through position exactly to the point where your club is pointing directly at the target. Do two sets of 10 slam and sticks. Now here's what that same exercise is going to look like from down the line. You'll see here how the club finishes at a position where it's almost directly pointed toward the target line. The fact that you're resisting the follow through is building core strength and resistance. You're also promoting a downward blow into the golf ball so we make good contact at the moment of impact. 
once again we want to do two sets of 10 this is a great exercise or a great drill to do on the driving range when the quality of contact needs to improve.